Assalamu alaikum. Today's video will be on the elbow joint as well as the cubital fossa. This overlies the elbow joint. The objectives include knowing the boundaries of the elbow joint, the contents, as well as the elbow joint itself and what type is it, the movement, the surrounding ligaments and bursas, anything related to the clinical aspects. Now, I'm just going to zoom out and show you that what we're actually looking at, as, uh, looking at is the right upper limb. Not everything is visible because our focus will be just on this point. So right over here in front, if you zoom in, this what you see in front of you, normally this space is filled with fat and overlying it there's the skin. So the depression in front of your elbow joint, that depression is what we call the cubital fossa. It is fat filled. But remove the skin, remove the fat, and this is what you see. When we talk about the boundaries of the cubital fossa, it is like a triangle in shape. So its base is actually an imagining line which joins the two points of the elbow bone, of the humerus from one end, medial epicondyle, to the other end, to the lateral epicondyle. So we take that as the base. The lateral most end is made by the extensor tendon. The extensor tendon is a group of muscles which then fan out and form all the muscles of the back of the forearm, the extensor muscles. But primarily the major muscle which is forming the boundary is the brachioradialis. This muscle right here forms your lateral boundary. Likewise on the medial side, too cl close, here we go. On the medial side, we have the flexor tendon. And in this tendon, and obviously this means that uh, all these muscles fan out in the front of the forearm to form the flexor muscles. The most prominent is actually the pronator teres, the one you can see right here. It actually has two heads. The one we're seeing is the superficial head. There's a deep head down below through which the median nerve passes. I'll show it to you when we get down there. So you can see how this is forming the medial boundary. So you got two boundaries over here and an imaginary line right over here. There's still more. You still need to have the floor and the roof. The roof, as I've told you, is the skin as well as the fat. But the floor is made by, number one, the bicipital aponeurosis. This thing you see right here, aponeurosis is a flattened tendon. In this case, it is an extension, a flattened extension of the tendon of the biceps brachii. As it inserts into the radius uh, bone, it then sends out a small flattened uh, tendon and this tendon is so important it's called the grace of God in Latin I forgot what the words were but it means grace of God the reason being is because of this bicipital aponeurosis which is forming the floor that any sort of penetration here which is done usually during phlebotomy or vena puncture any sort of extraction of the blood or injection that that needle is actually prevented from reaching the deeper structures by this strong ligament. It form is a protective of the underlying structures. Aside from this, then we also have the brachialis muscle, which is deep to the biceps brachii. This is also forming a bit of the floor. So these two are your floors. And these two protect all underlying structures. So what are those structures actually? The first thing you might have noticed is the vein, the superficial vein, very visible in front. I mentioned phlebotomy, which is basically the art and study of the vena puncture, extracting blood from uh, veins as well as injecting blood into the veins and vessel arteries as well. So this vein you see in front of you is the most common vein that we use for uh, vena puncture, and that is the median cubital vein. This is the typical present uh, occurrence. There are variations sometimes. It's a bit vertical and sometimes it comes from a, a little more proximally and more distally. But commonly, this is the how the configuration appears. And the two veins on its side include the cephalic vein, which runs from your thumb side. We'll start from the bottom, actually. Here we go. You can see how the cephalic vein is starting from the thumb side and goes all the way up to the lateral aspect. It will join the subclavian vein at the top, which is not visible over here. On the other hand, on the medial side you have the basilic vein. 
the basilic vein will go on the medial side as it goes up it forms part of the brachial yeah. vein on top right over here so these two basilic and cephalic have this sort of anastomosis between them and this is where the vein puncture is done so let's remove this and let's also remove this bicepital apneurosis so we can see all the deep structures I will now also remove let's move the other flexor muscles sorry there we go I'm gonna just leave the pronator teres and let's remove the brachioradialis as well and all the other extensors let's get them all out of the way and even the cephalic vein okay you can see a few of the structures here first thing you might have noticed are these nerves and which are actually branches of the main nerve below the median nerve here's the median nerve i think here we go you can see how the median nerve is passing underneath the superficial head of the pronotaries but above the deep head the deep head again it's not that very clear here but it's there so this is the median nerve and all of its branches so that is one structure to protect the other structure is this artery right over here this is your brachial arteries branch radial artery at this point it is radial if you go up above it becomes brachial the ulnar is more towards the side its origin can be considered part of the contents but it's more to the, uh, uh, it's more external main one is your radial artery actually these are the two main important structures found within the cubital fossa and also you can mention the superficial veins because technically they are part of the contents even though they're high up above so let's remove all these structures now and here we go you can see the a bursa is visible over here this bursa was actually for the tendon of the biceps and I remove the biceps the bursa is still there the right bicipital bursa it prevents any sort of friction on the tendon now we can see more of the elbow joint exposed here but to get a more clear view I'm, I'm going to further remove all visible structures so that the only thing between us is just the joint capsule and no other structure yet there we go and finally the brachialis forming the floor now we can finally see the humerus bone the radius and the ulna remember the elbow joint is a hinge joint hinge just like a door moving just two directions flexion and extension the supination and pronation is actually happening at the radio ulna joint which is a joint below the elbow joint so really there are two joints here but we're only going to focus on the top one here we can see the joint capsule the fibrous capsule which is lined with synovial fluid now before we go even deeper you can see how it's covering the entirety and you can see certain ligaments visible here the ones coming from the ulna are collateral ligaments ulnar collateral ligaments you have the anterior part of the ulnar collateral ligament you have the posterior part of the ulnar collateral ligament and then there was also a transverse part which should be visible here here we go the transverse part of the ulnar collateral ligament three ligaments from the ulnar side these were also I think contributing a bit towards the ulnar uh, canals but that was mostly by the muscles the flexor carpi ulnaris separate we'll do those later bursa you see right here is the olecranon bursa and this is the same bursa which is inflamed in students elbow students you know commonly tend to put their elbows on their desk again and again and keep on rubbing them so this bursa can get inflamed so let's hide this one here we can see the anconius muscle a small muscle but still important nonetheless and I will finally remove the extensor muscles here careful not to remove the joint capsule and over here we can see the radial lig collateral ligaments we have the sorry this is the uh, ulnar collateral is coming because you can see it's coming from the ulnar side but it's a lateral one so it's more laterally placed this one right over here this one is your ladle collateral because it's extending from the radius but the one which is growing in a circumferential way this is the annular ligament it's important as it holds the head of the radius if the head were to slip down from this you would call this subluxation of the radius commonly happens in children when you pull from their hands or their arms and suspend them like that so this thing can actually subluxate so these are the ligaments which support the elbow joint ignore the ones on the bottom these are the ones which are actually part of the uh, radio ulnar joint we won't be looking at these so let us remove these ligaments now finally we know that it's a hinge joint 
we know are, these are the important ligaments. It's still a synovial type of joint. And now let's finally expose. Notice how that the prominence of the olecranon part of the uh, the olecranon process of the ulna is quite visible and subcutaneous. That's why you can feel that bony part. The only thing over there is your bursa. There's no muscle as such covering this region. Even the ligaments, as you can see, are not covering directly. So once we remove the fibrous capsule, we can then see how the cartilaginous end, highland cartilage end of the humerus is meeting with the cartilaginous end of the radius and as well as the ulna. You can even see a small bursa exists below the radius. It's a small synovial membrane. And the important thing is, look how the ulna is the one actually directly meeting with the humerus. The radius is forming part of the joint, but as you can see, there is a foot of a distance. The main articulation is actually with the ulna, actually. So it's a hinge synovial type joint. Extension and flexion is done here. Not pronation and supination, that is separate. As well as we've seen the muscles around the region, the ligaments. And again, the arteries and uh, nerves which pass around this region, they are the ones which supply the region. There's not much else. We'll look at uh, the radio ulna joint in the next video, inshallah.